hello friends you are welcome back to the channel my name is Lawrence if this is your first time here I published a video on my channel yesterday about the sports event happening in uh, Paris France and you know what I think about 20 minutes after the video went public it got blocked it got completely blocked and uh, I had to take the video down well so I decided to make this video today um, so that I can still communicate the truth out there I want to get the truth out there so I am making the same video but in a different way okay now um, as I said the video was about the Olympics happening in Paris France and specifically the video was about the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in France. So the opening ceremony um, actually featured drag queens show. You know, there were some drag queens that actually um, performed um, some kind of <laughs> weird show right there at the opening ceremony. And you know, the drag queens show actually resembled the last supper of jesus and his disciples so the organizers of the olympic games actually received backlash from the christian community and even some christians said they were not going to watch the olympic games because they saw what happened at the opening ceremony as an act of mocking god or an act of mocking Christianity. So there were so many articles um, on this particular subject and you can see some of the articles right here talking about the same thing. So friends, what I want to say about the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Paris, France, is that everything that went on there, <laughs> everything that went on there was worldly. In fact, it promoted the agenda of the devil <laughs> that is what i can say it's promoted the agenda of the devil and uh, some years ago professor walter Weith spoke the truth or shared the truth about sports worldly sports including the olympic games so i'm going to share with you what professor walter Weith um, said about worldly sports, which includes the Olympics. Idolatry does not mean just bowing down to an idol. You could have different idols. What about world sports? And who controls world sports? Well, if you look at the symbols that they have, every single one of these super clubs has a Masonic symbol. It's very interesting. The greatest football team in the world, Manchester United, even uses the devil directly. Why not? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Masonic ladders, Masonic chev chevrons, uh, signs of shamash. Why not? These are the greatest teams in the world. And what about all of these? We have animals of darkness. We have uh, flying horses, which is Pegasus. We have all these interesting symbols with pentagrams and uh, shields of Malta and sun symbols and pentagrams and double-headed lions and goats, all the symbols and fleur-de-lis, you name it, we have it. Masonic M's, Masonic anchors, the whole shooting match. The Masonic fingers, the... Um, Skull and Bones, Titan is actually Satan's Greek name. So we have all these interesting features. The G, we, anybody who is a Freemason will know that that comes from the Masonic Lodge. If we go to Exodus, chapter 32, verse 2 to 6, And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters. Well, today earrings are very popular and bring them to me he made a golden calf and Aaron made proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast of Jehovah 
And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Now, what did they play? What did you think they played? Well, part of the system of sun worship was to play sports. What kind of sport did they play? That's very interesting. Well, let's go to UNESCO. They should know because the UNESCO um, manifest, as you know, was written by a Skull and Bones member. So he must be an interesting insider. And he writes, for example, Polo was known to the Persians and restored to its original sun game significance by Akbar. Scoring a goal with a sun ball was equated with the triumph of light over darkness, good over evil. But remember that masonry calls light darkness and darkness light and calls Jesus and Jehovah evil. So the triumph of light over darkness represented in paganism the triumph of Lucifer over Jesus Christ. So the triumph of darkness over darkness, good over evil. The ball is the sun symbol in all such sports as football, hockey, basketball, cricket. Baseball is related to the sun and the sundial shape and the pattern of the field as well as its rules of play and scoring. Like all sports, baseball also embodies the sun's seasonal cycle in much the same way as ancient ceremonial contests were held as part of fertility rites. So if you can't get them to the church, get them to the sports field. Isn't that interesting? And in the church you see the arms going like this, and on the sports field you see the arms going like this. Hymns are sung in the church, hymns of a different nature are sung over there. It's quite fascinating. Who cares as long as he has worship? Sumerian Gilgamesh story inscribed in cuneiform tablets narrates how the sporting equipment, a stick and a ring or a ball, which Gilgamesh had carved out of the uprooted tree had fallen into the netherworld as he began oppressing his people by repeated athletic competitions. And eventually, it was the sun god who opened a hole in the ground in order to recover them. So if you had a stick and you had a ball, if you took the stick and you got the ball into the hole, that was a symbol. It has a deeper meaning than what we really believe. Actually, it's quite a um, meaning, but forget about that. That's what golfers do, for example. You know, it's amazing. And how often we are told that this is marvelous and it's good for Christianity and all these things. I have nothing against sports. Sport is a good recreation. Sport is good for exercise. There are things that you can do with sport that are good. But if sport becomes a religion, isn't that problematic? Isn't that idolatry? The Olympic torch which the runner carries to mark the sun's cyclic movement through the Olympiad, the four-year period until the next games, is also related to the sun's cyclic rhythm. First celebrated in Greece, the name was ceremonial contest in honor of Zeus. Did you see the opening ceremony? Now, the Greek one, didn't they honor the gods? Yes or no? Yes. And we go. Off we go. Well, sun, moon, and other planets float overhead. Barcelona Olympic Games, the sun's association with sports, predates the deities Heracles and Apollo in Greece, as is evident from the epic tale of the Sumerian hill hero Gilgamesh. Fascinating stuff. As in sport, the sun is omnipresent on practically all aspects of life, whether it be art, architecture, philosophy, religion, festivals, folklore, dance, music. Wow! He's got every base covered. Every morning a pagan god of the day wakes us up. For the Romans in the early century of Christian era named each day after the seven planets. Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn. If we look at the symbols of the Olympics, you'll see they've got Bala Dad symbol, Bala Dad symbol, Bala Dad symbol, Bala Dad symbol, Bala Dad symbol. You can find them all over there. This is paganism. Here is a young man bringing a fine hockey shirt to the Pope. Let's see what he will do with it. A fine hockey shirt. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, that's a blessed shirt. So, Freemasonry controls all these issues for Rome today. The sporting world, the religious world, this is fascinating. I wonder how much idolatry is hidden in the mystery and how much more the Bible wants to reveal about this amazing story of Revelation 17. So friends, that was Professor Walter Weith about worldly sports, which includes the Olympics. And you know, the Christians who reacted to the opening ceremony actually um, decided not to watch the Olympics. All right, and I do agree with them 100%. I do agree with them. It has worldly influences. And so we should not waste our time and resources promoting or supporting um, the agenda of the devil right on earth. So friends, before I go, I want to share something coming from Ellen Jean White with you on the same subject, okay? So this is coming from Ellen White and she says, the true Christian will not desire to enter any place of amusement or engage in any diversion upon which he cannot ask the blessing of God. He will not be found at the theater, billiard hall, or the bowling saloon. He will not unite with the gay wildness or indulge in any other bewitching pleasure that will banish Christ from the mind. To those who plead for these diversions, we answer, we cannot indulge in them in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. No Christian would wish to meet death in such a place. No one would wish to be found there when Christ shall come. So Ellen White was talking about worldly entertainment or worldly amusement, which also includes sports. And uh, so friends, as I said, as Christians, God requires us to use our time and resources only to support his cause, to support his kingdom on earth. And uh, on the other hand, Christians are not supposed to use our time and resources to support the agenda of the devil. And if you saw what happened at the opening ceremony of the Olympics, you would actually conclude that this promotes LGBT agenda and other agenda of the world. And why should we as Christians support something that promotes worldly agenda and not promote Christ? So, I want to also know what you think about the Olympics in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about the Olympics. Let me know what you think about what Professor Walter Weith said about sports and Olympics. And also, um, some of the comments that you find um, right in uh, the video. So, friends, this is all that I had to share with you today. If you want to support my ministry, you can send your PayPal donation through my email address. So you can find the email address right on your screens. That is my PayPal email address. Let me say that, okay? So you can make your donations through that email address or you can find a donation link right in the description. Friends, we have a lot to do for the Lord. So we need your support, okay? So thanks for watching. My name is Lawrence and I'll see you next time. God bless.